leadership is really about how to motivate, organize, um, and uh, direct um, a larger group of people to achieve um, a better outcome. I don't think it's a good idea to ever plan your life. Uh, I think we live in a world that has so many uncertainties, um, and only more so today than ever before, that the idea that you're going to be able to um, take a job that's a stepping stone to achieve something else um, is a fallacy. Uh, that really you're able to create better outcomes for yourself and ultimately probably for the broader world if you simply focus on what you're doing now uh, or what you're next going to do um, and, and, and try to accomplish uh, and get the most out of that. I think you create more uh, interesting opportunities, you open more doors by not planning than you could ever do by, by trying to plan. I try to choose paths that are typically the less traveled paths. I think if you keep at what you're trying to achieve, there are lots of um, unexpected possibilities that can be made real. The obstacles are around how do you get the best talent to work effectively together and the resources to support it. And when you put those ingredients together, um, if you have clear sight on what you're trying to make happen, you know, a lot of magic can occur. And I think that good jobs involve three things. One, something that, that means something to you, that has some purpose to it, that speaks to you. Working with great people and having real responsibility. And I think if you have those three ingredients, um, there are many lids to every pot, uh, and you can have a wonderful experience. My advice that I followed, but that I hope others would be, is don't listen to the siren song of going to the law firm at the front end of your career, uh, because I think that's, um, for most people, not the right choice. My belief is that we're always building on top of our prior experience, and every job that I've ever taken um, I've tried to get the most out of it, and I always saw that as, or I didn't even have to see it, it was part of who I became to go on and try something new or different. I've been in this current position now for 21 years. I had a whole series of jobs that were a single year or most three and a half years. And again, there's no planning around that. It's that the work that I'm doing right now um, has been the right thing for me for 21 years, and it's been a job that has evolved over time as I've learned more and as I've um, been able to uh, find different opportunities to make the difference that I wanted to make. So I could see myself doing um, a lot of different things, that it was the nature of the people that I was working with, um, the ability to feel like I was making a real difference. Um, and those were the core criteria for me for deciding you know, what I wanted to do next. My own journey has been one of taking life in the only way that you can actually live it, which is step by step, and not believing or pretending that I was uh, setting you know, some long-term path that I was going to uh, pursue. You know, proverbial, it's not the I, it's the, the me and team. My time and attention has to be on making sure we have the right people, uh, that they are um, aligned as a group, that they're working effectively as a team, uh, and that they're empowered to make a lot of, that they know they're empowered to make most of the choices for the organization because they're not mine to make. And it means that I have to also accept that lots of choices are gonna get made in ways that if I were making the choices, I might do something different and that's okay. Um, because that's, that's one, they may actually be better choices than I would have made and two, uh, there's no way to scale if you think you're trying to do it all yourself. I think that um, there are always going to be crises, and, and so um, the best advice is to create an organization that has um, uh, effective leaders uh, in, the, in, the, in the regular course of conduct. So um, you can, you can, you're, you're, you're already behind the curve if you're only talking about the crisis moment. You, you want an organization that, um, even without a crisis, has the capabilities that are going to show well during a crisis. And so that takes long-term investment and again comes back to um, the ability to have people operate autonomously with 
within the context of a larger vision and, and collaboratively. Um, so, you know, first piece of advice is don't think you're building towards a crisis. Think that you're building towards regular state and recognize the, the capabilities you want in, 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 in normal times will show well in a crisis if you build them right. Secondly is trust your people. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, in a crisis, the tendency is for people to telescope in the decision making. Um, and sometimes, you know, there's an urgency that requires uh, faster choices, um, but you can still take input. Third would be, um, you know, even in a crisis, recognize that, you know, all your choices can be iterative and, 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 and you want to have as fast a feedback cycle as you possibly can because um, you may get it right, you're most likely not going to get it fully right. And what you really want is an, an ability to get that feedback quickly and be able to, to pivot um, and, 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 and make the choice. Also, even without a crisis, is to make sure people feel safe in making the choices that they do. Um, it is so hard for people to speak truth to power. It's so hard for people to bring bad news to leaders. Uh, I think it's underappreciated the difficulty that's involved in doing that. And um, it requires, one, first and foremost, that um, you, you can't, you, you, when someone makes a choice that goes wrong, um, you, 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 have to, you have to support them. Because the first time you don't, then whatever hope you had to get bad information just disappears entirely. Uh, so, um, you know, understanding the importance of communication, again, is like sounds trite, but it's true. Um, and, and, and being clear about pointing to the examples too. So like you make, make right choices about what you're doing, but a lot of people won't see them if you don't really let people know that this is actually something that's important too. So, I mean, I think partly the, the wonderful opportunity you, you offer people is access to um, a whole bunch of different experiences. And, um, you, know, you know, plainly, there's a lot to be learned from the case books. There's a lot to be learned from the professors. But um, the aspect that I think you're introducing here is the world of possibility that's represented by the Yale Law alumni. And um, the ability to hear their stories um, to interact with them, uh, hopefully to have opportunities not just to do this here, but you know, shadow them in their own work environment, um, do internships in different places, whatever it might be, that's a phenomenal and important opportunity.